Hello my brothers and sisters of the Order, welcome back to the Order, I am Celtic Templar, and yes, welcome to back to another Fantasy Friday. Now, this video comes to us from a viewer uh, known as the Blue Pawn. He commented and I asked him if he has any ideas on which uh, fantasy creatures I could cover, and well, he gave me giants. Now, he asked me mainly about the giants from Game of Thrones, for example, so we have to put that into play on how big the giants are in Game of Thrones. So how big are they? Well, they're somewhere between 12 and 14 feet. So that's going to be a big number. And the thing is, now here, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. The only tallest human in history, which is a big rarity, and of which who suffered from giantism, would be a Robert Wheelow, who of which actually uh, was stated to have been 8 foot 11. So that's actually pretty huge. And as well, there's also a famous German known as Jakob Nacken, who which would have been somewhere between uh, six and seven feet tall. So that gives us a good explanation. Now, why does this actually explain a lot? Kind of obvious. People do suffer from giantism out there. And the thing is, I even had to go through historical references of people being historically huge. And we even had to go into the Bible a little bit because of David and Goliath's story. Now, uh, if none of you all know why I had to go into this, well, kind of obvious. If we don't look into it, especially with David and Goliath, here's the thing. Goliath is stated to have actually been taken to the said uh, open field with his shield bearer. Now, this gives us a good explanation. In many stories and references, it always states that a giant needs to be either escorted or is nearly technically uh, holding onto a wall. This actually is a symptom of giantism, and of which it means that if those who suffer from a type of exterminated growth in the process have to deal with a blurry type of eye sickness, or in this case, they need impressive glasses for this to work. Problem is, back at the time, this would be a little harder. Now. I want to put this out to y'all. If any of y'all have ever seen or heard about this, here's the thing. Giantism is a rare type of thing. Now, I actually do have some family members that are at least about seven feet, so that gives us a good explanation. But they don't suffer from giantism at all, like we know. But that's the thing. However, we do have to understand that giantism entirely gives us this type of form. So, what would giants look like and what would their armor be? And, well, what would their weaponry be? Well, uh, one, I don't see them using any axes, nor do I see them using any swords. Due to the fact, since these are giants, that's going to be a rarity or a big metal type weapon. However, I do see them probably using them on one-on-one -on -one against each giant. In other words, a giant-on-giant -giant clash. Which, there are, uh, many, uh type of stories that we also hear about, especially from the tale Beowulf. Beowulf finds an um, ancient mystic sword in Grindel's lair in order to kill his mother. And in doing so, that's a good explanation. Now, uh, another thing we also have to understand, that this sword entirely was big enough to, that uh, would also be of a two-handed design variety. So what? And then there's also the fact that there are even many Celtic mythology in which states of make great giants using great swords. However, that's the thing entirely. Alright, now let's get into the armor. Now, first, we can understand their armor would be a lot different than what we actually expect. Now, I kind of like the Game of Thrones look, especially, because it kind of reminds me, and it kind of familiarizes me, with what they probably would wear. Now, uh, one thing I had to put this out here, yo, I don't see him wearing much metal armor. Now, helmets, maybe. This is a big maybe. And in such, though, mostly metal armor I don't see him wearing due to the fact uh, metal uh, armor would have to be constructed in their own type of way. For example, mail armor, or chainmail, uh, I don't see giants actually using this due to the fact uh, that's to make a chainmail shirt or male shirt, uh, I like to call it male, but there are a lot of people out there called chain mail for some reason. And, uh, well, here's the thing. The 
average cost of it would be somewhere between, if I was a medieval knight, it would be somewhere near uh, identical to that of uh, $2,000 in modern day money. So if we put that into retrospect of how much it would be for a, and here's the thing, uh, I have to wear an extra large shirt. So just think what might happen if it's a giant. It's going to be a lot bigger, so it might cost up to $4,000 or $6,000. So, yeah, that's a good explanation. Now, also with the said, uh, well, uh, male armor, have how long it takes to construct it. For example, for a regular male shirt, it's somewhere between two and three months compared to a giant that would probably be somewhere in the variety system of, say, 14 months, maybe. Now, the thing is, even if giants make it themselves, I don't see them making a ring small enough for it to stop a said thrusting blow. Kind of like this. For example, uh, male rings were manufactured to stop a certain weapon, but the thing is, the bigger the hole is, the easier it is to slip a massive weapon in. So I don't see uh, them wearing male armor at all. So, yeah, let's keep going, shall we? Well, what about plate armor, like articulated plate from Western Europe? Could that work? No. One, as I stated, just like male armor, they're going to have to get a lot of resources to make this thing. And the thing is... The bigger the guy is, the more time it is, and costly it is, is going to be to make the damn thing. So I don't see a giant probably wearing this. Now, I hear many of you already, uh, but Templar, why? It could easily work. Yes and no, because due to the fact you don't want to actually, uh, well, uh, wear a certain type of armor, for example, if in the case it won't work. So, uh... Plate armor entirely for a giant, here's the thing, that's going to need a lot of iron, and in the thing so, or steel, uh, I don't see a giant probably wearing that, especially from the medieval period. So, yeah, plate armor is pretty much out. Now, though, we can then go to actually something that could work, and that would be gambeson. Gambeson like this, or padded armor, could be perfect. Now, this is a... Uh, five to seven layers, and this is thick enough to stop resistant blows of sword cuts and such. However, it will cause internal damage, but that's because of the difference of the said armor. But the thing is, I do see giants probably wearing something like this, especially for their body and their legs. Now, some of them, like the poorer uh, giants, might wear a gambeson type or padded style helmet, maybe? So that could be perfect, and they would easily just protect their said, uh, well, vision entirely. So I do see a giant probably wearing something like this, like a full-on Gambeson outfit. So would that work? Maybe. Because of the fact, uh, just think about this, because humans actually have a type of retractable system of arm movement and leg movement. So if a giant gets this off, it's going to be probably somewhere between seven and uh, nine layers deep. So I don't see a uh, spear thrust probably going through this guy. And due to the fact, he's technically a giant. So it's going to be a little awesome to actually see a giant uh, probably wearing this. However, when it comes to plate armor, this is where something might actually happen. I have heard this somewhat happening that people would take laminar plates, or scale plates, and attach them to Gambeson like this. So, maybe over the years he would take uh, scraps of uh, metal and somehow attach it, but I don't know how that could work, so, yeah. However, he could probably have taken it from the battlefield. So, that could be a good explanation. Now, I want to put this also out here, there is also the fact of the helmet. Now, I do somewhat see them wearing helmets due to the fact helmets uh, in every variety have been used. Now, as I said, there could have been the Gambeson helmet. However, if they could afford it, they probably could make a metal helmet. Now, even though uh, Robert uh, Wildrow was stated to be 8, 8 11, he still could have actually worn a regular sized helmet at the time. The same as Jakob Nagen. So, pretty much, yeah, Jakob Nagen was also a German soldier, and as well, he even wore a helmet from World War II, so that's a good explanation. So, what would this be for a said uh, giant? Well, mostly though, I would have to worry about the fact 
that the most easiest type of area would hit him it would be in the face due to the fact if archers for example were easily able to pick him off in the head he would need to wear a helmet that would protect his face so he would need to wear something some nearly identical to this something that has a visor on it now, however since he already has bad eye vision I don't see him probably needing to uh, well cover the rest of his said eyes. So I do see this somewhat working for him. Maybe. The big maybe. So, eh, you can see this might actually uh, be a good idea. Because just from the general form of it, uh, even with my helmet like this, which this is an old uh, Crusader Viking helm, so, uh, yeah. However, I do see him probably wearing this due to the fact this is perfect for that type of design. Now, why is that kind of obvious? Just take a look at this. Do you honestly think someone could easily uh, face off against a giant if he was wearing this? Especially if he's wearing full gambeson and wearing a visored helmet. This would pretty much be perfect. Now, older design helmets, somewhat like this, that have the visor design or something like that, such as like a Great Helm or uh, early Great Helms especially from the Crusades, would be perfect so yeah maybe but that's that's my uh, belief that it could actually probably work now uh, but y'all could go with any type of visor helm that y'all want but you gotta understand uh, the reason I didn't want to include the uh, historical well kettle helm is because of the fact it this has this design shape for it, especially for siege warfare. So I don't see a giant taking a blow from the top of his head. However, maybe you all could maybe you all could actually give him a beard to design for him to have protection on his head chin. Like this. And as you can see, my entire head is pretty much completely head well protected. So even a beard to design, such as this to get rid of the kettle design hat feature and just make it a dome secret helm feature and just add the beard. So, perfect. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but still, I do somewhat see that probably working. So, anything besides the fact of this kettle helm could probably work. However, I have seen kettle helms that don't look like kettle helms. So, especially the one the Metatron uses, which is an Italian version. Now, I do see that somewhat working for a giant on giant clash, or something like that, depending. Or if he's going on siege warfare, guess what, it's just going to glance downward. So, uh, still, uh, visor helms would pretty much help out. Alright, now let's go to shields. Shields are a big category that we have to understand. Now, I hear many of you already, oh, Templar, what type of shield would they use? Uh, they would probably use this, they would probably use that, no. Due to a giant's height, we have to understand, a giant would have to wear a or use a uh, certain type of shield. He wouldn't exactly use a heater shield because most of his enemies are below him. So, what would he use? He would probably use a tower shield. Now, if none of y'all know what tower shields are, tower shields are uh, something like a scutum, a kite shield. Or one of my favorite is of uh, tower shields is the Bronze Age style kite uh, tower shield, which were strapped on. Which these are really cool in general because these were used in Bronze Age warfare, and I I don't know why I just love them. Uh, but just still, I could see that being useful for a said giant, especially if say there was a row of giants fighting in that type of form. So I do see the shield probably working for them, and as well, even if they're one on one, guess what? or uh, 1 on 20, the uh, giant can easily just use the massive tower shield just to sideswipe his opponents. So, small shields are out, such as no, no, no bucklers, no uh, small type shields, that of which are meant for 1 on 1. This guy's gonna be big, so he's gonna need a shield that protects his entire body. So, tower shields, it has to be. Now, what about weaponry is, well, to the major form I have to understand, to that type of, well, form into it. Now, I hear many of you already, Templar, the weapons would be incredibly different to their form. Well, we're going to get into that very soon. But the thing is, 
with a shield type formation, we have to understand that the shields were meant to, and designed to destroy a certain type of design. However, just imagine this if it came to a siege warfare and there are groups of giants using a massive tower shield, for example, to defend themselves against siege weaponry. Now, I can actually see siege weaponry probably killing a giant, but uh, with the shield design being slightly thicker, uh, I don't see a giant probably getting through the thing. Uh, or any type of weapon getting through the thing, due to the fact it's gonna, in the process, protect their entire body, and they can easily just use it as a rampart to, well, get into a walled city. Or, a uh, castle, give or take. So, they probably wouldn't need a ladder, so that's probably a little horrifying just to think about. So, kite shields are pretty much a major form I have wanted to explain, like, uh, my Crusader kite shield, which is big enough to protect my whole body. And as well, also with my Roman Scutum, but I am still a fan of the Bronze Age Kite Shield entirely. Now, uh, these tower shields I have to put out here are entirely meant to, well, protect the human body. And as well, we're perfect for formation-style warfare. However, with a giant, I can somewhat see this shield still working, even though you don't actually, uh, are entirely one on 100 or something like that, so technically a giant still might win just with his Kite Shield alone. Uh, Tower shield and loan, so we can understand that this entirely would work. All right, now let's go into weaponry. Now, when we have to understand the idealism of weaponry, we have to understand that giants entirely. Here's what I have to put out here. I'm very much already going to hear many people already saying Templar. They would use axes. They would use swords. Uh, yes and no for one major thing. One, I don't see them using. Uh, axes and swords on humans. For example, giants are, well, giants. And the thing is, they're not going to want to use a sword or an axe, that of which has a bladed design variation. Meaning, if I'm going to end up fighting against my opponent, I don't want to end up fighting against him, and in the process have to worry about the fact that I got to actually hit him. One major thing is, uh, we have to understand that, uh, for example, uh, in the tale of Beowulf, it's actually stated that Grendel's mother had a sword that was crafted by giants in his lair, and in doing so, uh, well, Beowulf uses the sword to kill Grendel's mother. And in doing so, we have to understand that's how big the sword would be. For example, uh, a giant's broadsword would look like a great sword to humans. So, what would... Uh, it be entirely, well, for one, we have to understand that the material that we have to construct the weapon, as I stated, with armor, the giant's armor have to be the same as with the weapons. They are half, technically, are slightly bigger. So, we have to understand from bronze, iron, or steel, they're going to end up having to have a shorter weapon. Not a great sword like weapon, like we understand. So, no broad swords, nothing like that. But, if they were going to use axes and swords, they would probably use it only on uh, giant on giant clashes, which have been known to have been heard in Celtic mythology, especially with Ireland and Scottish giants, apparently. That's how you see the giant's causeway in Ireland and Scotland. So, yeah. However, uh, entirely, their swords length would technically be the size of like something like this. This is a type of short sword, which I got from... Uh, um, Highlander Imports, which love this design, beautiful as well, uh, which this is a good example to it. This type of sword is meant perfect for cutting, but also good for thrusting. And I can see giants, when they fight against each other, they're going to end up using shields, especially uh, tower shields, ducking behind this and using it as a thrusting design weapon. However, that would be a perfect design also for cutting use. Now, there are many type of uh, short swords in history, such as the Gladius, the Falcada, the Copus, or as well, technically the Falcada and Copus are about the same thing, and as well, even the Xephos, which is a Greek style type Gladius, as I like to call it. However, we have to understand that there, even in the Bronze Age, there were many type of Bronze Age style short swords, especially even with the Copesh. However, we have to understand that the giant is probably going to end up using one-handed style weapons or short sword-like weapons 
rather than using a two a uh, longer type well sword. So anything between the short sword radius would probably work. However, also what about axes? Well, one they wouldn't use a uh, great axe such as a Dane axe because of the fact of the material use. So what would they use? Well, that simple one-handed uh, by a two-handed style weapons like this. This is a Viking style uh, one-handed, two-handed axe, and this is meant for uh, this is technically a bearded axe, which is meant for hooking people and as well cutting. However, a giant could easily manufacture a one-handed axe like this just to cut down a tree, since they're technically bigger and more powerful enough to technically cut down a tree. And this would be slightly bigger in the head size, but still, with a giant, it would probably be uh, this type of size and variation. However, they would only use this on one-on-one -on -one fighting, meaning they wouldn't use this, uh, well, technically, they would use this against other giants. They wouldn't use this against humans. So to the fact, you've got to try and hit the human for this to work. Now I could some, maybe see him using it in the side swipe, but not so much due to the fact, uh, one, with every swing you try putting in, a human can easily dart past the said giant. So this weapon, not perfect for human on, on fighting. Now I hear many of you already, okay Templar, then what is? What is the best weapons for giants to use against humans? Well, that's actually easy. That would actually be the flail is one of the first ones I would actually go with. Now, many of you might not know what a flail is. Uh, let me get my example here. This bad boy is of a high medieval period type flail. Now, though, this is a recreational design model. It uh, was my father's. And these uh, ball bearings would not have been historically accurate at the time. Of which, uh, in historical form, many medieval knights during the high medieval period, especially during the time when mail and gamison were the major armors at the time, uh, especially for medieval said knights, for example, they would have ridden into battle, and as soon as they lost their lance, this would be the first weapon they would have gone with. Well, that or a regular mace, but we'll get to that soon. Because, two, just imagine that this medieval knight just whacking someone with this. So, just imagine a said giant using something like this. However, this uh, type of shaft is shorter than most because there are many shaft design lengths. There's also the two-handed flail, which I do see a, a type of, well, giant using. Reason being, just imagine this, because if because the shaft for the, or handle shaft for the said giant is technically supposed to be the same length as he is. So it would be, since they're 12 or 14 feet, it's probably going to be somewhere between 12 or 14 feet in height with the shaft. The rest would be attached to a metal ball bearing or something like that, or great chains like this. So just think about this, because just imagine if a said giant was to use something like this, and it had multiple uh, weighted heads, in fact sometimes he's gone to two or three, it depends, and just imagine though, if this was to come whacking at him, especially with a downward swing, or even a side swing, as soon as they were to, say, open up their, uh, well, tower shield. What do I mean by this? Well, kind of obvious. Say, for example, I'm fighting, guess what, I'm going to use the tower shield just to sweep this group here, and then I'm going to come with another swing, and then come back. And then, it's just, or as well, I can then just keep going down with the downward swing just to protect myself. Now, entirely, these things were incredibly dangerous for both the opponent and the user, but I can still see a giant probably using it entirely. So, yeah... I really don't want to get hit by this, especially with giant held it. And in fact, there are multiple versions of flails, especially especially flail heads that were used with two-handed versions. In fact, the two-handed version was used by farmers just to separate the wheat from the shaft. And as well, it could easily be used for self-defense of your village. And in fact, it's actually been reported that many times over, uh, a couple hundred times in history, flails have actually been used, seen in many rebellions by, by farmers and such, or as well used in warfare, such as the Hundred Years' War, for self-protection. And in such, it can even destroy, well, go uh, damage a human skull underneath a metal helmet. So if the shock resorber is so deadly through the helmet, uh... What's stopping that power from killing a person, especially if it's a two-handed version, used by a giant? 
I could see humans probably getting killed. In fact, sometimes there was these weird uh, wooden orbs on the bottom uh, or a type of piece attachment with nails stuck in between them. And in Dutch, this would easily just devastate human beings. So I could see giants using flails and two-handed flails especially for warfare purposes. So I don't see humans probably surviving this. Now, I hear many of you all already. Uh, but Templar, you also talked about the mace. Well, yes. For example, maces have been used in historical warfare from the Bronze Age up into modern day. Now, many of you might not wonder, uh, or pretty much a lot of you pretty much wonder this, Templar, how long has the mace been around? It's been around since technically the Neolithic period in order for self-defense. In fact, if you grab a club, you can easily use it as a mace. But that's a little different. Uh, in which, you could easily just take a wooden, uh, well, uh, I want to say stick, but that's, uh, or sh uh, turn it into a shaft, and then you could place a bronze head or stone head that which you can make. And it could easily turn into a club, but then into a mace, which uh, cavalry warriors, especially during the Bronze Age and early Iron Age or uh, late antiquity, used maces, uh, not like this, but uh, entirely were meant to be used, uh, well, to destroy human beings underneath their armor, and it was effective enough. In fact, there are sometimes the pole mace, which was weird, but eh, it was very rarity. But I don't see giants probably using that as much, so yeah. But I do see them probably using the mace, and it's not going to be that hard for a giant to probably craft a said mace-like object with a wooden uh, shaft with a metal head. So I could still see giants using this. Now, what about other weapons? Well, one, I can somewhat see them using hammer-like objects, such as like war hammers or something like that, or a blacksmith's hammer, but I don't see them using it on humans. I actually see them using it on siege warfare. Now, why do I say this? Kind of obvious. Guess what? Here's the thing. You may hide behind your great wall and such, or your, have your fortifications and such, but here's the thing, all I need is a couple of giants with some hammers, and they could start creating their own door. They could even destroy your own gate. So in doing so, I don't exactly need to actually worry about the fact that there's a freaking wall in my way. So, yeah, giants with hammers, that would be horrifying for siege warfare. Another weapon we can also take a look at is actually from Game of Thrones. We see the giants when the siege or the fight for the wall, we see one of them using a bow and arrow, which I do somewhat see him using, but I could also see him also using crossbows. Why? Kind of obvious. This could easily work for siege warfare. Now, here's the thing. If any of y'all have ever heard of the windlass style crossbow, this thing is probably the most powerful crossbow in history, and, and well, medieval history anyways. Now, just imagine though, if you got hit with this thing. In fact, this thing is stated to have a draw weight over at least 920 pounds. So, just imagine what might happen if a giant manufactures something near identical to this, but it has more power. In other words, he actually creates his own windless crossbow, just from studying humans, and creates his version, but it's ten times more powerful. Meaning, I wouldn't want to be behind that wall if I was you, because that arrow is probably going to, or bolt, is probably going to go right through, and probably destroy another few hundred people, or destroy that wall. So, yeah, but for fortifications, it would destroy. But for open warfare, probably not a good idea. Now, though, there's also one final weapon I could see them using. That would be cannons, or in this case, hand cannons or handguns. Now, uh, many of you not, not know anything about medieval-style firearms, but medieval firearms were nicknamed hand cannons because they were technically hand cannons. And the fact is, I can see giants seeing humans, just like with the crossbow, they could create their own style of hand cannon by copying off of regular sized humans and creating a giant cannon. But here's the thing, the worst part is, I could probably see them using something that we call scatter shot, or in this case, grape shot. Now, if you don't know what this is, this is a type of, well... <laughs> a shotgun type of, well, design meant for cannons. So just imagine what could happen if a giant gets his hands on it. And here's the thing, giants can easily probably just get their, get themselves a bunch of rocks or whatever, and just 
put it in the cannon, and fire it. Which, uh, it wouldn't uh, surprise me that they probably would do something like that. Uh, but entirely, just imagine if humans faced off against something like that. So I don't see humans probably surviving the impact of a said uh, artillery piece fired by giants. So what do I mean by this? Well, kind of obvious. Would you want to go up against a giant that's firing a giant cannon at you? Uh, that's why I didn't, I don't think so. But I do see them somewhat sometimes probably using regular style shots. However, this would probably destroy armies and even also, uh, well, a town or a walled city. So entirely, I do see this probably working for a giant entirely. Now, I hear many of you already, uh, but Templar, how does this all work? Well, one, as I stated, we have to work with the Gambeson. Then we actually combine it probably either also with a helm, if they could get, well, attach it. And as well, as I stated, their entire body is entirely covered with padded armor in every form. You know, sometimes they might even have a padded helmet of some sort that they can make. So they're covered head to toe in padded armor. And as well, their shield would always be a tower-like object type shield. And then their weapons, as I just stated, would be like that. Their flails would be perfect to destroying humans in a fortification. However, there would be the two anti flail that would be meaning they wouldn't need a shield, but destroying and havocing. These guys would probably be berserker like giants. And then there would be the mace giants who would still also fight with the flail giants. In other words, they would stay behind a shield wall and just, just wreck havoc. Then, as well with warhammers, they would pretty much destroy the city fortifications. And as well with crossbowmen and bowmen of the giant fortification uh, type military, they would be using those type of weapons to destroy said, well, armies, or uh, in this case, uh, well, besieging a city. The same could also be said about hand cannons or gunners, who of which would actually, well, stand in the front ranks and destroy a massive wave of humans like nothing, and then probably destroy the city. However, when it comes to giant on giant fights, we could see swords and axes, but only one-handed style short type weapons. So entirely, we have to understand this would be the perfect idea for a giant. Now, I want to put this out here, y'all. This idea, as I stated, came to me from one of my uh, viewers, and he actually picked out a really good idea for me to do. But if any of y'all have any ideas for me to cover for Fantasy Friday, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to get to them as soon as possible. As well, if any of y'all have any disagreements with this uh, type of idea, let me know in the comments below. And we can see if that could be a good example to it and all. And such. And as well, also like and subscribe. That way we all can actually help the channel grow out. And so you can see more. Also click that bell button for more notifications when the next video comes up. As well, guys, also check out our Facebook. So that way you can also see some really cool stuff. Anyways, guys, this has been Templar. And have a great Friday. Mm -hmm.